With the help of this test problem, I want to introduce one more concept which we haven't discussed so far. And that is, self-inverse functions are their own functions. Self-inverse. That means, inverse of the function is the function itself. That is what we mean by self-inverse. Let me give you a few examples and then you can answer these questions, right? Now, as you remember, when we did inverse of a function with the help of a graph, we had drawn a line, which was y equals to x. And then by flipping the graph over this line, or taking this line as a mirror, by finding its image across this line, we could get inverse of a function. And you also saw that there are many invariant points, right? So invariant points are those points which do not change. Correct? Now, let us say we have a function which has all points as invariant. Then the inverse of that function will be the function itself, right? For example, we can have a point which are there on the line itself, like this. Points like this, what I'm trying to say that this set of points is like, uh, like all the set of points where the value of x and y is same. A and A, where A belongs to real numbers, right? If that represents your function, if this represents your function, it is of this form where A belongs to real numbers, like then it's a whole line, which is y equals to x itself. In a way, this represents a line. So here we could say a function f of x equals to x, that would be y equals to x. A set of points where x and y values are same. Do you see that? So that is, you say, self-inverse, right? Or we could have just a function with few points. For example, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1. Sorry, this should be curly, this should not be curly brackets, right? And let's say 1, 1. Let's say like this, right? So all these points are invariant points, and their inverse will be the points themselves. Okay? So that is what gives rise to self-inverse functions, functions whose inverse is also the same function. right? Now let's read the questions and try to answer them. Self-inverse functions are their own inverses. So find three linear functions that are self-inverse. That is your first question. And second is, find a non-linear function that is self-inverse. Okay? So you need to figure out now what are these functions. Find three examples for linear functions which are self-inverse. One, you see here right, this line y equals to x. Okay? So figure out. This is very interesting think over it okay and my suggestion is we could have functions like y equals to x as I said y equals to minus x right that will also be inverse of itself for example if you have a line like this now if you reflect this line on the line y equals to x then each point from this side will come over here and the point from here will go to that side. So in this way, all the set of points will swap and you'll have the same line. So it is a self-inverse function, correct? So that gives me two examples. How about the third one? There could be many, many lines and that gives you an idea. Any line which is actually perpendicular to this line, do you understand? Any line which is perpendicular to this line can be reflected onto itself. So that gives you infinite number of solutions for this question. Do you agree with me? That's how it is, right? So you can get a lot of answers like this. At times, you can also represent your answers in mapping diagram. If we don't specify, correct? Then you can say, well, the function could be like 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3. Now this function 
from either side function and its inverse they are exactly same so th there are so many ways in which this question can be answered how about graph of 1 over x it also reflects on this line right onto itself and so there are many examples which you can give for these kinds of questions it's just about you know getting one right and I hope now it has opened a lot of options for you must have enjoyed that right wow great thank you